I'm now calling this meeting to order. Today is Wednesday, March the 22nd, 2023. And I know that the starting, starting time for this meeting is 7 o'clock p.m. Good evening. My name is Councillor Leanne Andreessen. I'm the 2023 North Perth Municipal Budget Chair, and I'll be chairing this meeting this evening. Welcome to the special budget meeting for the Municipality of North Perth. Let's begin with our national anthem. Please stand if you are able for the singing of O Canada. the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to acknowledge and recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples of Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live in respect to this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to, do, to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed necessary. Circumstances may include instances where the, contact of the content of the debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. I thank you for your decorum over the course of this meeting as we work collaboratively together. I'd like to wish everyone a welcome this evening and welcome to those joining the Municipality of North Perth on our YouTube channel. Welcome to our councillors staff and delegations participating in this meeting this evening. This evening, Councillor Neil Anstead is joining us, I believe, virtually. So welcome uh, to Councillor Anstead. He is our um, deputy chair for this committee. I believe that Councillor Johnston is going to be late this evening. He'll be coming um, as soon as he can, and we look forward to having him join us. This evening, our meeting will focus on capital budget expenditures for the 2023 year. We will be hearing from all of our departments in terms of capital projects that are being proposed. Our thanks goes out to our department heads and to finance for all of their efforts to prepare their proposals for this evening. So this moves us now to item 2.1 pertaining to pecuniary interest. Provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and remove themselves from discussions and voting on the item. Councillors are required to inform the clerk of pecuniary interest in writing. 
Councillors are reminded that at any time through the course of the meeting, councillors can inform the chair of a potential pecuniary interest. I invite any councillors to share potential pecuniary interest during this public session. Does anyone wish to declare a pecuniary interest at this time? All clear? Okay, seeing then, we'll move on to item 2.2 um, regarding our agenda. I have a motion um, in, before me that reads that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Could I have a mover for that? Councillor Nordham and a seconder, Councillor Wathbaugh. Then we'll have that vote, please. And that is carried. Thank you. Next up on our agenda is item 3, 3.1, and this is regarding our consent agenda. In the consent agenda, we have the meeting minutes from the March 8th, 2023 budget meeting. Does anyone have any errors or omissions or changes to point out from these minutes? Okay, seeing none, could I have, uh, we will make this motion. The motion reads that the minutes of the March 8th, 2023 budget meeting be adopted. And Councillor Blazek will make that motion and seconded by Mayor Kaysenberg. And we'll have that vote please now. And that is carried, thank you. This evening, we, are, um, we don't have any delegations or um, any other public presentations at this time. And this moves us on to our next item on the agenda, which is item five, regarding our capital budget. In the council agenda package online, the public is encouraged to follow along using the ebook link. We will be following the ebook to review the process for our capital budget. As we work through the proposals for each department this evening, it is really important to note that these proposed capital expenditures will not impact the tax levy. These projects will be funded through other sources, which could include grants, reserves, user fees, segregated surplus, donations, and or development charges. Each department head will provide a presentation about their proposed capital expenses this evening. And after each presentation, councillors, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions from each manager or seek clarification at that time. I'd ask that you please hold any of your actual comments and we will have those comments during the debate in item seven when we conduct that full discussion. There will be an opportunity at that time for Council to engage in a debate and discussion about capital expense proposals at item 7 at that point in the meeting. So I think we'll begin now with our presentations and again we can follow along with the ebook, which is in the agenda. And um, <clears throat> 5.1, we'll invite our CAO Chris Snell, who will talk to us a little bit about proposals um, for administration. Welcome, CEO Good evening, and thank you, Chair Andreessen. So, um, <clears throat> the capital submissions by uh, administration are brief. There's the one project, and that includes um, planning uh, the development for the um, what we're now calling the West Development Plan, which is the lands around uh, the Steve Kerr complex, and commonly referred to around our office as Bidding Street, but we have changed to a more formal name. It really is looking at hiring um, consultants, planning consultants and engineering consultants to get us to the point where we can um, um, bring some um, concepts to council and then ultimately proceed to an official plan amendment if necessary and other planning applications right up to draft plan approval of the subdivision. It is being paid for out of segregated surplus at this point, but obviously, it will hopefully be recruited 
when we sell, sell that portion of the land um, to uh, potential developers. And take any questions council may have. Thank you, CEO, CEO Snell. Um, any questions or points of clarification required by council at this time? Councilor Rothwell, go ahead. Thank you, Chair uh, and Teresa. I appreciate that. It's a good council. Uh, CEO Snell, the uh, timing of this project is uh, how is that going to work with the county official plan uh, in terms of uh, its process uh, and and how is it, is it going to blend together, or, or are we going to be ahead of it? The, the hope, obviously, is that we'll um, um, it'll work together. Ultimately, that will be the decision of council. So if we do get ahead of the official plan and we think there's going to be official plan delays, obviously council at that time can determine if they'd like to submit their own application ahead of the county official plan work, or um, we can wait on the official plan to catch up to us if that if that happens later in the stages. Sure, uh, just further, if I may, uh, Chair Andreessen, the what I'm concerned about is that uh, under the Planning Act, uh, there's only certain times that we can expand uh, uh, service settlement area, and it's based on justification studies, which I understand have been done, uh, but uh, the timing in terms of uh, when it can be undertaken is a uh, a crucial step. So I'm just concerned uh, here, and, and I don't think it, it uh, is going to uh, delay or, or uh, in any way uh, hinder this process. I just want to make sure that we're not caught up in a, in a uh, time frame uh, that is problematic in terms of uh, the new county official plan coming in and our desire to see the lands move forward for development uh, as soon as possible. I, certainly, we're conscious of that um, timing of the official plan. Um, I think the reality is we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing private development not wait on um, the county official plan, and we, I think, at least need to be prepared to um, get our property in the in the hopper as well, just so that we sort of don't get left behind in the county official plan process as well. Thank you. Any, other, any further questions or clarification needed? We'll have an opportunity to have further debate, too, uh, um, during item 7, but I appreciate your comments and questions, for sure. And we can do some further reflection at that point. Thank you. All right, that takes us to 5.2, um, Manager of Strategic Initiatives. Jessica McLean will join us now. Good evening, Council, and thank you, Chair Andreessen. Um, so the Strategic Initiatives Department has proposing three capital projects in the 2023 budget. The first project is an update of the municipal website and a branding exercise. Um, so the current format and content management system of the municipal website was last updated in 2018. Staff recently met with the municipality's account executive to discuss possible updates to the website to increase staff and user experience. Um, during this meeting, an opportunity to update the North Perth website to the new GovStack CMS solution was presented. This solution was developed based on feedback from GHD's current website client base, which is predominantly municipal governments. And it offers um, more informative navigation tools, accessible web design, and more flexible layouts, which would benefit both public users and website management staff. GHD Digital is offering existing clients a discounted price to migrate over to this new um, solution at a cost of $15,000. And staff are also proposing $5,000 to be added to this project, which will be allocated towards municipal branding updates. And this project um, is proposed to be funded through segregated surplus. The next two projects um, fall under the Economic Development Division of the department. Um, the first one being the Downtown Listville Parkette project. This project was included in the 2022 capital budget. 
In 2022, government funding was secured for the downtown parkette to supply an outdoor dining, seating, and a landscape attraction in the downtown of Listowel. Um, the streetscape master plan, which was approved by North Perth Council, included this project and is now updated to incorporate outdoor dining, landscaping, and art attraction. In 2021, a pilot outdoor dining space at the Main Street East parking lot location was well used. The 2022 project had limited bidder interest and was significantly over budget due to very tight timeline and a competitive market. The grant that was allocated or was received for this project in 2022 was allocated to a completed eligible project and now reallocation of this money is um, being requested to the current project. An updated municipal contribution of $130,000 funded from the Economic Development Reserves is proposed for a total project budget of $179,000. And external partnerships to fund the project are also being investigated at this time. The last project um, I'd like to bring forward tonight is a carryover project, and that is the Moncton G2G Trailhead. In April 2022, funding was approved by OMAFRA through the RED program. And this RED stream grants 30% of project costs to enhance cultural heritage or tourism attraction. The purpose of the G2G Rail Trail Moncton Trailhead project is to install a visible and user-friendly trailhead to the existing G2G Rail Trail at the Moncton section head location. Partnering with G2G, the project includes the design and installation of trailhead amenities, such as signage, pathway access to parking, a kiosk and bench, re removable market stand, Wi-Fi access, and a bike repair station. This will increase visibility and use of the trail by visitors and residents alike and promote outdoor active experiences and awareness of rural agriculture and heritage in the area. The total project cost estimate is just over $46,000 with 30% grants received through RED and a $500 contribution from G2G. The remaining will be supported by the municipality. G2G is supporting the project implementation and this has been extended to the end of March um, and carryover funding is requested for this project in the 2023 budget. I can answer any questions Council has on these three projects. Thank you, Ms. McLean. Any questions or clarification required from Council? Mayor Kaysenberg, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair Andreessen. Just a quick question about the website project. Um, when you talk about migrating a website from one CMS to another, it's essentially a new project. It's, it, it requires that level of intensity, generally speaking. And so I guess my question is, would this go out to tender? Um, that could be an option that we explore. Um, we have had very good experience working with um, GHD, which was formerly East Solutions, um, and the discounted pricing they are offering to migrate over to GovStack is competitive, in our opinion, but we could look into other options. Uh, just noticing that uh, we're welcoming Councillor Johnston, so come on over. Happy to have you join us. I have a question, if that's okay. Um, could you just speak a little bit further to the branding about what that will entail and um, how that will update, um, you know, I guess our business corporate look? Yes, uh, through you, Councillor Andreessen. Um, so the branding included in this project would be a bit of a smaller scope at what we've budgeted. It would mostly be to update um, like the North Perth logo that is featured on the website and give it more of a contemporary feel. And then in future years, we could look into updating um, the other different marketing materials that the municipality has to match with that branding. So that, that updated logo would be used you know, in all of our corporate communications and um, business. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from Council? Um, go ahead, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, uh, Chair Andreessen, uh, and thanks for uh, the uh, presentation. Uh, just uh, the third uh, project there, uh, the uh, railhead, uh, uh, trailhead in uh, Moncton. 
I think it's a fantastic project, and it's going to be, I think, uh, one of the uh, uh, most substantial investments by a municipality in terms of the G2G within Perth County, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, I know the uh, county, uh, through our uh, tourism, uh, has uh, targeted uh, uh, cycling as one of our uh, key initiatives here, and uh, uh, wholeheartedly support, and especially uh, when we see uh, some of the uh, amenities, including the uh, bike repair and charging stations, as well as uh, those other uh, matters there. And there's some other uh, conversations about possibly uh, having washroom uh, being available and so on. So that's literally the halfway point between uh, the G to G. So I think it's fantastic to look at this investment. And uh, I will say with the uh, passing of a longtime retailer, Doug Coda, uh, within our community, Doug uh, I knew personally, and uh, he was very much an advocate of the G to G trail. I'm sure he's uh, smiling above us uh, that this project, uh, hopefully if it is approved, uh, would be going ahead. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you, Ms. McLean. Thank you, Council. Next up is 5.3, and we'll invite manager of programs, Amy Gangle, to approach us as Council. We look forward to hearing about her projects for programming. Thank you. There you thank you. Uh, budget Chair, members of Council. Uh, we would like to look into the purchase of new program software uh, to improve efficiencies in our recreation and childcare registrations and accounts receivable, as well as be more user-friendly for our families and registrants. So improving these efficiencies will allow more staff, time for program development, and focus on the quality of our program services uh, versus all the administration required for registering. Uh, we have had uh, some attempts uh, to include this in modernization. We were not successful, so we're bringing this forward as a capital item. We estimate $20,000 up front with an annual uh, licensing of $4,000. That would go into our operating. And uh, we also included staff time for the data transfer, acknowledging it that might be a need for us. Uh, the costs of purchasing new software outweigh the benefits that we'll get back in our efficiencies. Uh, when reviewing uh, the recreation program software portion, we are also going to evaluate the benefits of including uh, facility scheduling. So uh, we're not sure if this is going to be an all-encompassing or if we're looking at registry, recreation, uh, and then child care, but that's something for us to investigate. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Gangle from Council? I have a question. Um, we had talked about uh, a, a big capital project that we're considering. That was around the Galbraith Conservation Area. Will you be coming back to Council at some point with that project? Yes. Uh, early April, we will be bringing it for Council's consideration. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On to 5.4. And we'll be hearing from Manager of Corporate Services, uh, Ms. Hale. Is she joining us virtually or? Oh. Is Ms. Okay. Becky Belfour, our Deputy Treasurer, will be making the presentation this evening. Welcome, Ms. Belfour. Thank you. Councillor Andreessen, Council. So Corporate Services in front of you has uh, a few projects. Asset Management Plan Next Steps is the first one. North Perth Asset Database is const constantly being improved and updated, as well as the overall Asset Management Plan is evolving and needs to be brought up to date for purposes to meet legislative requirements as they are implemented through the province. A request for proposal will be circulated in... Uh, tandem with the development charges background study and update. They work hand in hand together. Next year is um, five years for us for updating our capital, our asset management plan. So we're just combining them together and doing it a little bit earlier. I feel it would be very good. There's been lots of projects added. Um, it will give us some better numbers. Now we have our capital planning. It will help with that in our new software. So it just all seems like a, a really good fit at this time. 
So that being said, it'll be around $70,000 and it'll be coming from reserves. The development charges review and update, again, will be in tandem with the asset management plan. A development charges background study was completed and implemented in August of 2019. With the significant growth in North Perth and changes in legislation, consideration will be given to any potential amendments to address both matters of um, Bill 23 implications for capital funding. A request for proposal will be combined with the asset management plan and will be completed for 2024. And the approximate cost will be around 25000 and it will be from reserves as well. So this is a good fit, again, with Bill 23 that we can have some information for our budgets for next year. Uh, that I believe that will be part of the request for proposal is to uh, have the, um, the uh, tender process implemented with them giving us that kind of information or working with us to get some information for Bill 23. Next, we move on to IT department, uh, corporate services upgrades annual. So there's a Windows 11. This is a little a little over my head, but I'll read through. I think Eric worked with uh, Fran uh, to pull this together. So um, I'm sure Simon's here if, he, if we, we need any clarification on anything. So Windows 11 migration to keep current and limit our variations for operating system maintenance. Uh, we will be migrating to the remaining 140 person computer units to Windows 11. Uh, the upgrade software is no additional cost and staff time will be added to our IT operating hours. Data security, this has been an ongoing effort for the IT department. Additional data protection and data loss systems will be deployed with an initial cost of 55000 which will transfer to an annual operating licensing cost of 55000 per annum to maintain. Firewall upgrades. Firewall upgrades are critical to the security of our network and systems. Estimated cost, 4000 Wi-Fi upgrades. Upgrades that are required to meet current demand on system usage for an estimated 16000 to be funded uh, by set seven. Supervisory control and data acquisition, the SCADA, audit and update. The connectivity for the SCADA system needs to be reviewed and updated as needed to ensure a reliable, secure data flow from the water or wastewater treatment plant to the network server, servers. Estimated cost for hardware is 15500 And laptop acquisitions, estimated at 45000 for 28 replacement laptops and estimated seven new laptops as needed. Sale of old equipment is estimated to provide revenues for about $5,600. Total is 69400 Disaster recovery sites. So disaster recovery relies upon the replication of data and computer processes in an off-premises location not affected by disaster. When servers go down because natural disaster equipment failure by cyber attack, the municipality needs to recover lost data from a second location where the data is fully backed up. IT is working, uh, working the man with the manager of facilities to locate an appropriate and discrete DR site. The DR site will utilize repurposed servers and storage area network. Uh, it is expected that some physical renovations and HVAC equipment will be required. After the site is prepared, IT staff will secure connectivity, plan the topological, and install server equipment. The estimated cost is 30000 This is a very reasonable cost for a business continuity solution for North Perth. <clears throat> Governance initiatives. So the $160,000 is for IT project support funding and earmarked for the IT governance committee initiatives throughout the year. One of the projects identified is an online program registration option, which would be of significant benefit to both our customers and staff as per manager of programs report. Other projects are expected to be recognized by the committee throughout the year. And the cost is 160000 IT communications building. The purpose of this building is to provide a cleaner, more spacious, and secure area for communications equipment that is currently residing in the base of the water tower. The current situation needs remedy due to the poor environmental and safety factors as the room is getting crowded with equipment for both customers and rent for space and our own gear. The budget is funded is to fund engineering consultants for options and design. 
and projected cost is 20,000, all being from reserves. That's corporate services proposal for the capital budget. If you have any questions. All right, thank you, Ms. Balfour. Any questions from council? Mayor Kaysenberg. Thank you. Um, are we any wiser about the province's um, uh, plan to split development charges into this development charge bucket and the community um, benefit fund or funding uh, charges? I'm not any wiser on that. I'm, uh, uh, CAO Snell may have some more information on it, but... Uh, like, like, I guess my question about this project is, I assume that we're going to try to take into account anything the province has indicated with regards to the community benefit charges and finally tease these pieces out like they had intended. Does that sound right? I'm on the right track? CAO Snell? Yeah, I think that's. I mean, I think the reason for the study is both um, trying to address the provincial changes as well as also. Um, it just seems like we went through a development changes, but obviously, as council knows, we've had a, a tremendous growth period, and we just want to make sure um, we have accounted for everything that's going to be necessary um, going forward um, in the next little while as well. Um, so it's kind of twofold: one, to catch up to the provincial changes, and two, to make sure that we are in line. Um, looking forward to um, appropriately charging development for the upcoming costs for development in North Perth. Thank you. Oh, we'll move on to uh, Councillor Nordham. Uh, thank you. Do you share um, The communication building, uh, will that remain at the water tower site? I think they're going to be investigating where that might go. Uh, just give me a second, communication building. The budget is funded to engineering con consultants for options and design. So I'm not sure that it might remain there. It may also go with the options somewhere else, unless you know something more than I do, Simon. It might have to be somewhere in the area because of the that's on the water top for, from third-party vendors. So just to repeat that, um, our Simon from IT indicated that we'll be looking at possibly around the the, um, the water tower area because that's where most communication systems are. So it could be around, you know, in that general area that they'll investigate, correct? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from council? Oh, Councillor Rothwell, go ahead. Chair Andreessen, uh, and thanks, uh, Becky, for the report. Uh, just a, a question uh, first. Uh, our current development charges bylaw, it is good through till 2024, is that correct? I believe it is. So yes. the intent is, just as in the previous one, is that that uh, this uh, project would be completed uh, before the, the bylaw, uh, our current bylaw. Uh, That's correct. Yeah, yeah that's and correct. with all of the changes. I thought, I thought so. And just, uh, if I may, uh, further a clarification on the uh, 160000 uh, that's proposed uh, for the uh, uh, IT uh, project support. It does mention uh, the other uh, recreation or uh, programs committee uh, uh, report, which was, I think, for 20000 So is that 20000 in addition to this 160 or is the 20 part of the 160? Just a, just a clarification. My understanding is the 20000 would be for the software program. This would be also cost associated with staff to implement all of those costs as well and any upgrades that we would have to do to the system, plus any other projects. That's my understanding. I think this was earmarked so much a year for when the um, IT Governance Committee proposal happened a few years back. Mm -hmm. There was to be funding coming out every year for these projects. And... I mean, if it doesn't get spent, it doesn't get spent, but that there is an amount that IT governance can keep moving forward with various different implementations of software and hardware that are required throughout the year. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything further, Council? All right, thank you, Ms. Belfort. Thank you. We'll move on to item 5.5 in our presentations, and this brings us to our Manager of Development and Protective Services. And we'll be hearing from Chief Jenny Pate. Welcome. Thank you, Chairperson Andreessen. Good evening, Council. The North Perth Fire Department is proposing one capital project in 2023. 
The NPFD fleet currently includes support vehicles at both the Listowel and Moncton fire stations, but not at the Atwood fire station. Atwood station personnel frequently use their personal vehicles to respond to emergencies, which can cause unnecessary congestion on scene and introduce contaminants into their personal vehicles. Firefighters' use of personal vehicles for emergency response is not in keeping with industry best practices due to the potential health and safety issues and liability concerns. The $77,000 budget for this project will be funded through development charges. I'd be happy to take any questions Council may have at this time. Thank you. It's one project for, uh, for your department. And we have a few questions. We'll start with um, Councillor Nordham. Uh, thank you. Through you, Chair Andreessen. <clears throat> I see it's uh, priced out for a, a hybrid. Uh, is there any reason um, it has to be a hybrid over a conventional vehicle? Um, we are, as a municipality, uh, working on our sustainability um, project and piece, um, so we are looking towards that. We will also have um, two EV chargers at the Listowel Fire Station um, next year, um, or actually this year, um, so that's what we are looking for, but it will depend on pricing and availability. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you, Chief Pape. We're now on 5.6, and this brings us to the Manager of Environmental Services, Mr. Mark Hackett, and he'll present his proposals for capital projects. Thank you, Chair Andreessen and Council. Looking at the wastewater department first. We have a couple projects here. Um, the first one is the um, uh, wastewater treatment plant. We talked about it the other night a little bit about the upgrades to the septic receiving station, to the clarifier, and to the uh, clarifiers as well. So this project would be spread out over two years, over 2023 and 2024. Uh, the first part would be, as I mentioned, the, the secondary clarifiers, and the second part would be the septic receiving station. Um, we were looking at doing a single tender for that project and uh, where we would combine the two projects into one. So in 2023, there would be a, a $2 million and $20,000 is what we're <coughs> excuse me, proposing. And in 2024, it would be $2,290,000 for that project. The next project we have is the waste station uh, upgrade and this is the on-site waste station at the sewage treatment plant. Um, it is a carryover 20, from 2022. We had some difficulty in, in sourcing the pumps that we wanted to put in there and also having the product availability due to COVID was an issue so we're just looking at moving that project to this year and that was at um, $100,000 and the next one was uh, RAS pump replacement. So this is a third of three RAS pumps that we have return activated sludge pumps at the wastewater treatment plant. We've already done two of them. This is the third one. It's original equipment, so about 30 years old now. And it was priced at $45,000. And that's the wastewater. I don't know if you want to take any questions about that or if, I can move, if you want me to move right on to water. Okay. the water department. We have a number of projects. The first one is the water meter replacement um, and, you, and you're well aware of that one. That's coming out very soon. We'll be starting at the near the end of April and that's replacing uh, the water meters throughout North Perth um, and also adding in the new AMI system that will allow us to have a, a much more information available to the public and uh, that they can see their water usage and also detect water p potential water leaks. Um, this project's been split between water and wastewater, so it's showing here as um, 1.55 million, but it's actually split 775,000 to water and 775,000 to wastewater because it's for both projects. Uh, the second project is a hydrogeological assessment of the Atwood water system. Um, so as you're aware, Atwood has been experiencing significant growth over the last few years. And um, we have been looking at uh, putting water throughout all of Atwood. And uh, that would also include installing fire hydrants and having uh, fire protection that way. Um, 
we don't produce enough water to be able to do that right now with the wells that we the two wells that we have and we're bound by the permit to take water that dictates how much water we can take at any given time and on a daily basis so this is just uh, the first step in addressing that is uh, the hydrogeological assessment um, to have that permit possibly reevaluated because we could possibly upsize the pumps and, and draw more water that would be able to provide that protection and that was at $25,000 for the assessment. Um, the next project is uh, the water tower cleaning. This is something that we do every couple, about every five years, um, based on conditions. So it's a cleaning of inside of the tank, and also the outside of the tank has uh, got a lot of dirt that's accumulated over the years. Um, and they're also going to be doing some safety upgrades. The... Uh, lift protection, the fall arrest protection um, it, it is kind of out of date and needs to be updated. And so that project came to about $50,000. And the final project was um, a bulk water station. So we do have a, a bulk water station now, or actually it's just a hydrant with a meter on and a backflow valve. Um, and that's at close to the water tower. Um, and that's used for companies to come in and they get a, have a contract with us where they can pick up water in their trucks to fill pools or dust control or different things like that. We do meter it during the summer months, but in the winter we're not able to do that because everything would freeze up. So a lot of municipalities have been moving to these um, automated bulk water stations. Um, and then so it would have an a enclosed hut around and a heated structure that would go around this. Um, and it would house a, a meter, a backflow device, the electrical hardware, and other associated equipment. And then all haulers, when they wanted to fill up, would be would have an access code. So that would allow them to fill up the station, and the billing would come from that automatically. Uh, so we would be sure that we're, bill we're getting proper um, billing, not just relying on the honor system. And also it would provide additional security to our water system. And that was at a... a Hundred thousand dollars. There was a picture of one of them at the, of that at the end. It's just a small little thing. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's just an idea of what one of them looks like, where they can hook up. So those are the projects for water and wastewater. I could take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hackett. Any questions about water or wastewater capital projects? Oh, thank you. Yes, um, Councillor Nordum, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Through you, you Chair Andreessen. Um, just curious with this uh, bulk water station, uh, will it look similar to the picture? Or, um... uh, I, that's just one that I found. I don't know if it'll be exactly that. It'll be something similar to that where it's a heated structure, all the equipment's inside, and then it would be uh, people who would have, have access would either have a code that they could punch in, yep. like a, automatically, or a swipe card type of thing. So it'll be something similar to that. Um, one, one of the reasons I'm asking is uh, uh, I, would, I asked about the communications building and if it would be close to the water tower. Is there any chance that these two projects could be combined if we're building in that area? Um, I hadn't thought of that. I, I'm not sure if that could be, that be if that could happen or not. Um, we could look into it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's relatively close to where it is right now. The um, Probably thirty meters from the water tower where the where the hydrant is, so it's something that could possibly be done. I'm not sure of the demands of what they need for that building that they're looking at. To tell you the truth, okay, just just curious. I guess my my concern would be water and electronics don't really, you know, go too well together. So my concern would be any kind of, you know, spillage. <laughs> accident with water would be devastating to our electronic systems. So it might be something to to look at both ways, right? Sure. Combined project, but making sure that uh, it works. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Hackett? No? All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Next, we're inviting uh, Lyndon Couch, Manager of Operations, who has lots of projects to share with us as uh, he's managing all the road repairs and construction, so I'm sure we have lots to hear from him. Welcome, Mr. Couch. Thank you, Chair Andreessen, members of council. 
instead of going line or page by page, there's a summary at the back of the flip book. It, it was on my page 229. It's about four pages from the very back of the document, and it summarizes all projects by department and uh, even within the department by type of project. So I'll just give you a few seconds to find the very end of the document um, and get to what is the roads administration tab. And it starts out with the equipment section. Yeah, literally at the very end. I thought it was a great way to summarize projects. I can certainly go back and look at the individual sheets and explanations for each one, but I'm, I'm pretty much going to recite them as we walk through it. So if we go to the public works section, maybe. Two twenty nine was something I had. Page two twenty nine. Okay. Okay. The first item under the roads administration for uh, is equipment, and and I'll just briefly go over the new piece of equipment, which, which is a three-quarter ton pickup truck for the Listwell Yard. It's going to be multifunctional. We're hoping we'll have a full-time patrol truck that's dedicated to patrolling, but it's also going to be able to have the capacity to hold a small sander. We do have difficulty around buildings like this one, sanding safely. Uh, we run a large sander through the middle of the lot, and we don't get into the corners, basically, and we don't get to where uh, the cars are parked. A uh, patroller can run that truck and sand in small areas. So it'll be multifunctional. It'll also give them an, a needed vehicle instead of driving a large vehicle like the one ton uh, on, a, on a patrol route. Uh, so that's additional to the fleet. Uh, beyond that, we've got a 2006 trackless well beyond its life cycle uh, for replacement this year. We're hoping to have a dedicated uh, single source uh, purchase of a new trackless um, that will be sent out in the next weeks. A sweeper, which is a 2011 which if ordered even today would not be here likely in 2024, won't even be until next year, but we're going to start the process of a tender and the deliveries are up to 12 to 14 months. Um, our machine is aging and the fan unit is failing again and we'll need another rebuild. We're going to run it through the summer and see how much it can last into next summer, but we do need a new machine that does have VAC capabilities, new sweeper. Um, replacement of uh, radios is just a new project in we're doing with all the other municipalities. Our radio frequencies are dying. We need new ones. Um, and beyond that, there is one listed item that I know Becky has been circulated, circulating, and it's for the water division. It's a replacement of the 2015 caravan. It's got 190,000 kilometers on it, and uh, they're getting a 4x4 pickup. The budget for that is 53,000. It's not on that list in front of you, but it does take the total capital for equipment to 793,000 budget. So that's an additional replacement vehicle for the old van that they're using. Uh, the truck will be more useful and traveling less distances, but doing more work. That's equipment. Before we get into the next section, the next page, um, I'll just categorize it by saying it's, it's asphalt resurfacing and road rebuilding in general, multiple projects. I, I won't read them all. Road 140 is almost double the price this year because of a large culvert replacement that's on it. So instead of the normal 250000 it's 400 because of that structural replacement that's involved. This should be the last year of the joint project with Perth East of rebuilding Road 140. Uh, we have a road that's uh, in Moncton Station Street uh, that we'll, we will resurface, put some drainage in. It's in concert with a drain repair, municipal drain repair. Uh, the chip and seal programs are running on sections of road. We're doing a shave and pave operation on Barber Avenue in Listwell. It's listed here. Infrastructure under the ground is good. Curbs are good. Pavement's in very poor condition. It's uh, a perfect candidate for that type of work. We're widening one of the gravel roads that has several significantly bad muddy sections on Line 81. Uh, that'll be a larger project done internally, and it's listed for this year as well. Arthur Street and Trill Bridge has come up several times. Got to do some surveying. Looks like there might be a shed and maybe a fence that's on the road allowance that might be in the way. That's always been a bit of a, a problem for this job. So we're going to identify the location of infrastructure and we're probably going to hard surface it uh, later this summer if we can, uh, depending on just the geography in the area. We're looking at a double chip and seal treatment there to harden the surface. It'll work well on top of the asphalt millings that are there now. 
moving beyond that uh, to um, bridges and culverts, several are listed. You're going to see several projects like this. If you look over on the right side, some are getting fully rebuilt. The one on line 88, a road that's dedicated for rework next year, is going to have a full replacement at 736000 The rest of the pipes that are shown there are culverts, are pre-engineering work. We're planning it now. We're going to build it either next year or the year after. That's the bridge and culvert project. We're going to uh, secure an engineer and do our OSIM inspections every two years as we're supposed to under the regulation. That's under here as well as some small culvert repairs that we'll be doing ourselves under our own assessments. Uh, brief item on sidewalk. Sarah Street may have some new development with uh, the hospital and clinics. If that's the case, our sidewalk money will go to rebuilding a very narrow, non-conforming sidewalk on Sarah. If it doesn't go there, there are plenty of other sidewalks that need replacement it'll go to. Um, next master plans, the transportation master plan. As soon as the capital budget and budgets are over, we'll be reviewing all those documents and hopefully bringing them to council in April for a draft review of two months of the draft master plan. The master servicing plan for stormwater and sanitary should be here in November of this year. It's listed. Moving on to road projects, same scenario, some just for survey, preliminary design, boreholes, some assessment for rebuilds in the next two years. York Street needs asphalt and some stormwater work. It's, it's on the list for pre-engineering. We move to the Northeast Master Plan, which is under construction right now. We have accurate estimates, just around $7 million for the remainder of the work in this first phase. We are going to start right in and have started into the second phase of the Northeast Developing Lands, which is basically everything else. Engineering, many studies, survey work, uh, um, probably borehole work and other uh, preparation will be done this year for the next phase, and it's listed there at 579. Uh, moving on, Atwood Core project is uh, looking at detailed design and approval from the ministry on water main installation at least. Uh, depending on their timing on road resurfacing, we'll be ready with our project and hopefully have it approved by them for our cross sections. We could even go ahead early, do the water works, install the water for looping as necessary with the growth in the community, and we could be waiting on the ministry to do a broader core revitalization project in the future along with their resurfacing program. But this at least gets us their approvals and us ready to construct when uh, timing is best. I'll be, bringing, I'll be bringing more forward to you on that but this gets us the engineering design that we need. Um, Louise Avenue North is up for tender today. Uh, reconstruction of that section of road and a much needed sidewalk and, and better pedestrian PXO up there for the school and the busyness, especially during school days. Uh, moving on, Elma Street is to be out for tender next week. Uh, much needed uh, reconstruction. Uh, next project is Elm. It went out for tender today as well. It'll close in three weeks. Uh, reconstruction of uh, poor sanitary conditions as well as uh, the street itself. Tremaine Avenue is for pre-engineering. Uh, there'll be partnerships with the county and other discussions about this, but we need to get the project started and designed um, in light of more development and more traffic there. Uh, it's listed in 2024 in your schedule as being constructed, but that would be pushed out a year. I'll be moving that with Becky out of that window into 2025. Uh, road widening 23 is in conjunction with all the development on Highway 23. We probably need a longer three-lane corridor, uh, better drainage along the side with a cost share, and just some redevelopment of the surface with the subdivisions that are going in and the new uh, multi-use blocks off of what is Twomley Street. So small project we need to do planning for. Moving on again, downtown reconstruction and revitalization. Um, that is looking at the state of the infrastructure and doing a, a little bit more work with video to know how, uh, how the actual sanitaries are, are working or not working and the storm system as well. And we're going to be uh, ascertaining a better price for the work to do a core revitalization project and a streetscape type project as well to give good numbers to council for the next few years to move forward with a project like that. We'll also be looking from the information for recommendations from the engineer as to how you would phase something like this and what's urgent and what's less urgent in terms of those core blocks. Nelson Avenue, again a pre-engineering project for the deteriorated sections in the north end of uh, Nelson that will need reconstruction. So we'll start into that this year. 
uh, the Elma Street Bridge rehabilitation that's listed is simply a part of the Elma Street reconstruction. So part of the same job, those two sets of dollars will go together to get that work um, completed by the end of this year. Binning Street reconstruction is everything on Binning Street from Wallace all the way out to the Ken Station. A full resurvey has already been started, actually Council endorsed starting that last year and uh, we hope to have that ready for design and tender by the end of this year. So that's the end of roads, road rebuilding, road reconstruction, shave and pave gravel program. Um, and that brings us to the bottom line of 16400 I can answer questions on specific projects and uh, challenge Lindsay to get to the right page if you ask for one. department our operations will be very busy um, during construction time this summer and uh, we know that you're going to be busy working on all these projects um, council do you have any questions about any projects coming up with roads operations mm -hmm. thank you councillor johnston thanks lyndon and that's great to see so many roads being uh, looked at and, and repaired on your estimates here, have you found or are you assuming that the costs are going to kind of level out? Or have you, um, without looking at last year's budgets, I'm assuming you've put an inflationary number in there. Yeah. And are you finding things are leveling out or are we still getting... We're using firms that we used last year, consulting firms we used last year, and we saw 30% increases in some of the prices. So we've kind of hit the middle ground with the estimates. Hopefully they're accurate. We shouldn't see as high of increases theoretically, although we know concrete's very expensive and asphalt was quite high as well. So it's on the high end, but hopefully the estimates will cover what we're going to see from the bidders in the next two and three weeks. And to be honest, we're all kind of holding our breath to see where they come in. Um, Councillor Nordham. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair Andreessen. Uh, thanks, Lyndon. Uh, I might be jumping ahead of myself, but uh, you spoke to Line 88 and the reconstruction of it probably the next year. Will that uh, also be going uh, directly into Wallsville there too, or just the Line 88 section? Yeah, we stopped short last year to try and avoid the urban part of Wallaceville um, just because of the difficulty in, in paving in that area. But yes, next year's project would include going through town and then extending out through over the bridge. Um, will there be any drainage work needed in Wallaceville? Yeah, at this point, um, we're looking at a straight resurfacing project, but there'll be enough monies put aside if we do need to do some drainage um, I actually would have to talk to the <coughs> infrastructure supervisor. He's been looking at just that. We haven't planned it yet. Okay. Uh, the actual detail in terms of what we're doing as a project will happen this summer. Okay, thank you. Councillor Duncan. Uh, Arthur, Av, Lyndon, you said uh, putting down a hard surfacing treatment, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that that was crushed asphalt that was put on that road, is there enough of it left on there to put a hard surfacing treatment on? Well, there is. We might have to mill, mill it a bit. Uh, it's the difficulty of regrading the surface and then pulling up what will be large chunks. Chunks. Uh, and if that's the case, then we'll have to mill it up, uh, compact it, and, and we'll have to... We, we want to do a double chip and seal if we can get that in that corridor. Again, we'll do some surveying beforehand. That'll give a hard surface that's supposed to work well. It's very low traffic volume, obviously. Only, I think, five homes at the end of that road, but it will give them that dust-free solid surface that they're looking for. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Um, just around, in reading this report, I'm noticing that it looks like there's a chip and seal uh, treatment that's dedicated for Road 169 and Line 81. Um, have you had a lot of input from residents around any concerns with that type of treatment? Um, People seem to be confused by the purpose of it, and if you could speak to that a little bit more, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, I, I know uh, when we first started two years ago, it, because it goes down so messy, we have to leave the aggregate lane, and then traffic literally pulverizes it into the tar yeah. and creates that hard surface. But if you look at 158 and 165, 
Uh, it's, it's a noisy road that's rough in its beginning, but after the first plowing season, uh, things smooth out. It is doing exactly what it needs to do. We're doing roads that are cracking. They might look like they're in good condition with no wheel rutting, no real problems, but it does seal the surface better than the fiber mat and other technologies in the past. Um, so it's been quite successful. We're only looking for five to seven more years of extended life out of this. We're not looking for 20 years of um, repair. Uh, so it's been successful. And yes, there are complaints. We post specific signs, and we actually had signs made up specifically for the work to warn people about loose gravel and loose surface. And obviously that that's what we'll expect for the first few weeks as people drive on it again. And we put out communications prior to that kind of application or, or let residents know in that area? Yeah. I, I, actually, at Council's wish a couple of years ago, our, our capital program is listed uh, by, in detail, and all the projects are listed. And we try and give status updates. So the public meetings were on there for Elm and Louise, but also for Chip and Seal, we'll put a, a, a category in there with a map saying these are the areas that are targeted and what people should watch for. But it's... It's a maintenance, but it's the best tool for getting out to the public and explaining what we're doing. So based on uh, this report, it looks like just those two roads that, that are listed here at this point for that treatment. Okay. Yeah, we, we've had the benefit of working with other municipalities in the past, several of them, but this year is a bit of a lull, actually, in all municipalities for asphalt work and other treatments, so it's a reduced amount, but it's good for us to uh, we'll look at the tender amounts and see how competitive they are and bring them back to council. Thank you. Council, any further questions? Um, Council Rothwell. Uh, and thanks uh, for the uh, uh, presentation. Uh, specifically on the track list uh, here, uh, this is on whatever page it is, uh, 109, I guess, uh, on, on the uh, sheets there. Uh, so we talk about uh, replacing the uh, existing track list unit. Uh, my, my question is whether it would be valuable to keep the current one so that we have a second one because we are taking care of both or all three of Listwell, Atwood, and Moncton. And as you, as we all know, when the snow comes, it doesn't just fall in one or the other and, and people need to use our sidewalks. Would it be beneficial to have uh, the, old, the, the current one as, uh, as a second unit uh, until such time as uh, we may have to have another second unit? Thank you. Thank you. When we inherited Atwood and Moncton from uh, contracted work, uh, out of necessity, we did go to that extra unit, which is actually three. We run two in Listwell. We kept the oldest, and we found another actually older unit from Aurelia. And uh, we ran those two with a new one that we have now. We're trying to get two newer, one old. One does have to trailer out to Moncton and Atwood every time we need to run it. We're looking to coordinate with facilities, and there might be better machinery in the days ahead that we could store down somewhere in the south end, but we're always going to have to trailer something to one of those communities by the looks of things. Good. I, I didn't uh, realize yeah. our full inventory, but yeah. uh, just by the sounds of it, we had one and, and we're replacing it. So I appreciate that information. I think that's uh, good, good news. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any further questions, Council? I think that uh, brings... Oh, go ahead. Councilor Duncan. Um, thank you. Uh, Lyndon... With the amount of sidewalks we're adding in Listowel, are we going to have to add another trackless in the near future in town here to keep up with the amount of extra sidewalks we're adding? We are running the two machines. I think it's more a case of level of service. Uh, we do get everything done prior to school. Uh, with the problem being there's one school at the northwest corner and one at the southeast corner. And we have to get through the downtown and run out and get everything done before 9, which we do. We have added more sidewalk each year as we are assuming subdivisions. I think the two machines are adequate. The minimum maintenance standard and our standard is to get it done once it hits eight centimeters within 48 hours. We always get it done that day. It's just that pre nine o'clock might be difficult in some areas and you'll see some of the secondary roads taking time to get done. But it's a good question. We should look at what we're assuming in the next year to two years and maybe through DC funds, we could look at another unit in downtown, sorry, to service list well specifically. But right now the two are doing the job. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think that finishes it up for our questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Couch. We're now on 5.8, and this is about our facilities section. And this uh, now 
Um, has an invitation for um, Jeff Newell to join us and give us a presentation on all of our proposals for capital with facilities. Welcome, Mr. Good Newell. Evening. Good evening, Chair Andreessen and Council. Um, similar to what Lyndon had presented, we're not going to be going through page by page of the flipbook, um, but if, uh, if staff could just turn to 227, I believe, is the page. Um, the Facilities Department has developed an ambitious capital program for 2023 uh, with a large number of important projects. Uh, Council has received the description of each project in the package and flipbook, providing a more detailed description of each project. In an effort to streamline uh, this evening, I will not be going individually through the flipbook presentation. Uh, rather, my goal is to provide a high-level overview of the projects and touch on some of the highlights uh, of the projects across the municipality. Uh, before we move on, I just wanted to inform Council that there was an omission in the package, which was uh, the project to address accessibility improvements at St. Mary's Daycare. That's a carryover project uh, from last year and is funded by a grant, so it doesn't have any impact financially. It just wasn't uh, listed in the... In the um, in the book. Um, some of the highlights for this year's capital program include, uh, I've broken them down by um, big ticket projects and uh, health and safety related projects. The first one uh, is uh, the MAP 59 or Memorial Arena Park project. Uh, that's a prior commitment to council that we've been working on. Uh, the fundraising is underway and is uh, very successful. Um, at this point, and um, we're hoping to continue with that. Uh, we have not set a date of start of construction because we want to make sure we're realizing as many donations as possible. Um, the total project cost is 1.4, and I believe they've raised in excess of $350,000 at this point. So they're having lots of success and still early in the fundraising stages. Uh, the second project I wanted to mention was the roof on the PUC building, uh, public works yard, and we had spoken about that at council before. Uh, the price tag on that was $650,000. Uh, council asked that we go back and try to get a couple of other prices and designs for the roof, and we are in the process of gathering those now. Um, we may be able to do a standing seam uh, metal roof on there, which would be less than the six dollars uh, uh, amount that I've put in this budget, um, but we will bring a report back to Council on that uh, but, and then go out to tender with the various designs that Council is interested in seeing. Uh, the new park development um, is a uh, $500,000 um, price tag, and then uh, we're looking at the improvements and creation of parks throughout both Listool and Wallace this year. A uh, consultant and architect has begun uh, and we'll begin a process of um, speaking with ratepayers in those communities through public information nights, and uh, they're scheduled for this coming month in April, and to get feedback. Uh, that part of the project is uh, approximately $50,000. The remainder of that $500,000 is uh, not set aside for any one park just yet. It's there. Um, as, as, a, as a placeholder that if we can get to a park and install a playground, if need be, then we've got the money there. I'd like to be res as responsive as possible to community need. Um, and that 500000 could be sawed in one big field that we need to cover, but at least there's some uh, funds put aside for that. Uh, the trail project is a carryover of uh, $119,000. Uh, that is grant funded and that will involve uh, surveys and assessments of the bridges on the trails in, uh, in Listowel. The Moncton Ball Lights, which was approved last year, that project is underway. Uh, the poles are laying on the ground and ready to go. Uh, that's a $146,000 project. <clears throat> the uh, review of our facilities is something that was done last in 2009. Uh, and it's a condition assessment of all of our municipal buildings. Uh, it would set the stage for future capital programs and timelines and budgeting. So I think it's very important that we uh, tackle that project. Uh, the framework is already there from 2009, but we've added facilities since then, and we are well along the way of the life cycle of some of those, uh, those facilities now at this point. So it's time to do another assessment. 
And finally, the Atwood Pool filtration system that is currently being installed, and that was a $170,000 project. Um, the following projects are important due to risk or health and safety concerns. Uh, Memorial Park Playground, so not to be confused with the Mor Memorial Arena Park project, but the, uh, the adjacent to the pavilion there is a playground. Uh, we've already removed one section of that playground due to the end of its life cycle. And from a health and safety standpoint, we would like to replace that, that playground structure uh, at Memorial Park. And we're anticipating a cost of about $300,000 and would set up an RFP uh, to realize as much as we can with those funds to get the uh, best facility we can in there. Uh, Chief Pape only had one project, but I've got more of them for, for the fire station. So we have in Atwood, we're looking uh, from a health and safety standpoint to improve the uh, ventilation in the Atwood Fire Hall parking around the outside of it, like a paved parking area, uh, increased lighting and restoration of the walls within the, uh, uh, within the, the bay. Uh, that is approximately $102,000 if you combine all those projects together, but they are important because of uh, the signs of uh, mildew and lighting, dark areas, and slip and falls. So those, that's a a project of about $102,000 that we are looking to uh, to address those concerns. The driveways at Perth Meadows were approved in budget last year but came in uh, significantly over budget, so we readjusted our, our budgeting and we've gone out for uh, tender on that. Uh, there should be a report coming in the next week or two to council uh, to award the tender of that project. Uh, we're also concerned about the Memorial Park, this, the risk um, to the facility and to others in that area with mischief. Um, that project is underway and should be complete by the end of uh, this month. And uh, that is partially funded by a grant and uh, is a project that uh, we're looking forward to have done in, in good time. Uh, and then finally, uh, the pool facility in Listowel has reached the end of its life cycle and future planning needs to be done for a potential uh, replacement in 2024. Uh, we need to have some concept drawings done up and uh, we would like to go out to an RFP on that um, so that we can get the project underway as early as next year to replace that uh, outdated facility at this point. Those were just the highlights from uh, the number of projects that we had. I'd be happy to answer any questions on the ones that I've spoken about or if there's other ones that people had an interest uh, in knowing more about from the flip book, I can answer those questions. Mayor Kaysenberg, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm interested in the, uh, the the budget that has been allocated for aquatic drawings for a replacement pool and list tool. Um, obviously, uh, pools of this nature have uh, some history of being supported by fundraising in the community, and I'm wondering if that is also part of the thinking. You, you've included in here notions around um, diagrams but or drawings, but uh, yep. I'm hoping that there's some thought about how the community can get involved in paying for the next pool. Further, it's just a second item of thought, is that there is a growing um, ability to install stainless steel pools. And I'm wondering if, as we think about a product facility um, redesign for a new pool and list tool, that we consider the possibility of a stainless pool. Um, it could even be an insert for all I know. Again, that's up to engineers and stuff. But yeah. um, that may present some interesting opportunities and, and increase longevity of the next pool and list tool. So sort of two things there. Yeah, if I could uh, respond, um, the uh, the notion of uh, a stainless steel is something that we could certainly include as part of the RFP that people could um, use in the conceptual drawings of this. This is the conceptual stage as opposed to the final tendering process of, of, of the project. Um, as far as community support, um, that would be a, a budget item for next year for looking at 2024, similar to the MAP 59 project, that we would have a price tag of 
X million dollars, and we're hoping to raise money. Uh, there could be grants as well. Uh, you know, we don't know at this point, but um, so it's kind of a two-stage approach. This year would be the drawings. The following year would be the construction. I was wondering, um, on the same topic around the, a new aquatic facility, um, just through economic development um, with us here at the municipality, we've been talking about how to um, build even tourist attractions here and provide more tourism opportunities to attract people to come to list on uh, to North Perth. And one of, one of our challenges here is that we don't have water. Uh, we don't have a beach. We don't have, uh, you know, those kinds of amenities, natural amenities that really draw the public. So I'm wondering if there's any opportunity to have some conversation, to do some thinking about what we could create as an outdoor facility that could have some interesting components that could make it um, that kind of an attractive type of facility. Again, an outdoor facility that um, might be a drawing card to our community. Is, that, is it possible to engage in some discussions around that, um, to do some further thinking yes. around that purpose? Yeah, certainly. Uh, the way, I, in my mind anyhow, I look at uh, Memorial Park as really a destination park mm -hmm. compared to a neighborhood park or a passive recreation area. It's got the amenities of the skateboard park, the ball diamond, uh, the pool is there. There's, It's a reason for people to come to town. And so, uh, you know, a fantastic pool facility there. We know it already works to have a pool facility there. It gets, It's booked up and it's programmed. Um, but to really take something to the next level, it could make it a, a destination or further enhance that notion of a destination park in Listowel. Would that be something that council engages in or through our economic development team? Um, will there be a process that you would think about um, with, yeah. with that type of discussion? There'll be a teamwork approach to it for sure because... Uh, uh, myself, I'm not a pool person. Amy Gangle is a wonderful pool person, and she has seen a number of facilities that, mm -hmm. and knows the ins and outs of the programming of those facilities to get the best value for it, whether it be leisure lanes or lane pools or uh, slide options, those type of things. That will be important for us to talk as a team, and we can engage economic de development in that conversation. Okay, thank you. I look forward to... Um you know, the possibilities of that and thinking about what we can do with this type of project to uh, enhance our community. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mayor Kaysenberg, go ahead. So another question. I, might, um, I, I didn't notice in this budget, and maybe it's, it's just a lack of seeing it, but um, uh, I think a year ago, maybe even two years ago, we expressed some concern about the floor in the pavilion at Listowel Memorial Park. And uh, that floor is, is not gotten any better. It's certainly um, cracked and with some jagged edges that uh, children playing could uh, encounter risk there. So I'm wondering if you can update us on your thinking about what we're going to do in that pavilion. So one of the things that uh, we did do is we, had, we did do patchwork in there. But we knew it was patchwork. It wasn't going to be a long-term solution. Um, but the facility review that we're going to undertake, uh, if council gives direction to do that, pavilions would be one of the things that we talk about or would have an assessment done on the life cycle of it and uh, the condition assessment. And uh, we would know more from that. And uh, they, it could be as much as uh, to re redo the floor or put a new structure in there alt altogether. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Anstead has a question. Certainly. Well, um, Councillor Anstead, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair Andreessen, and thanks very much, Jeff, for your report. Uh, just a quick question on the chargers for the Listowel Fire Station. Uh, I didn't see it mentioned on your sheet. I'm just curious. Uh, we're, this is a cost that's going to be borne entirely by the municipality. There's no grants or funding for that. Is that correct? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jenny, but this we can do this out of the building funding. Is that correct? I don't know the right terminology for it. Um, out of, we would fund it out of building operations. Um, it's the chargers would be for staff use, as opposed to public use, because of the location they would be at the fire hall. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Duncan. Um, I just wondered if you can uh, tell me a little bit more about the storage facility for the Elmwood Community Centre. Yes, so one of the things that's been an ongoing problem is storage in that facility, both for um, outdoor equipment as well as uh, indoor things, whether it be tables, chairs, um, staging, those type of things is an issue. And I know that the Outwood Lions would certainly benefit from uh, a storage facility. So we're looking to do something as an add-on to, uh, to one section of that facility. Um, nothing fancy, just something as a as a, a like a bunker of storage, bunker gear for outside. Like how roughly size-wise, do you have any idea? No, we haven't got a size, like a, a measurement as such, but I would think, uh, you know, like a 20 by 40 or something like that that we could attach to the side of the building. Um, we don't want to spend an awful lot of money on it. We just need extra extra floor space is really what we need. Okay. Uh, Councillor McNorton. Uh, thanks to you, Chair Andreessen. Uh, the Memorial Park Playground, uh, I understand there will probably be a playground on the uh, Memorial uh, site. That's correct. So how? Um, just curious, how close will those playgrounds be? I'm so just... one would be uh, to the east of the Ball Diamond is where Memorial Arena Park project will take place. So on that site, that pavement there, um, that's a play structure that is a sensory play structure. So it's not... Uh, the same as a, a regular climbing type uh, apparatus. They're, they're, they are both playgrounds, but they would be, they serve different purposes. Okay. So one is more naturalized, um, and the other one is more bone, you know, structurally bones, what you see in most communities, right, with the, the climbing and sliding features and stuff like that. Okay. But they would, they would be in the same neighborhood but serve two different purposes. Okay. Uh, Mayor Kiesenberg. Councillor Nordham's question. I think um, I, I look at that budget, 300000 is a lot of money for play. Um, and so I'm just expressing a little bit of concern about that. Of course, you know, historically, again, this has been uh, the fodder of service clubs. They can get involved and, and finance some of those. I won't say that I know the capacity of, of local service clubs towards that end in, in Listowel at this point in time, but $300,000 is a lot of money for play, just as an observation. And it's one of those things as well. You could, yeah. you, you could look at it and say if we wanted to do a $100,000 playground, they can make a playground for whatever dollar value, but if we're trying to look at something that is replacing the size of what we currently had there in our, in our discussions, it we think it's probably around that neighborhood. Uh, the price of that equipment is extremely expensive. If you recall last year in our budget, we had put in for uh, playground upgrades um, of $30,000. And what we found is you couldn't get anything that would tie into any new system, or sorry, any new equipment that would tie into an existing system and make it any safer at that point. Like it, they, they just don't talk to each other, so. Mm -hmm. Councilor Rothbaum. Uh, Chair Andreessen, and just further to this point, uh, anyone that's uh, had uh, involvement with uh, our local schools and so on and in, installing of playgrounds knows that uh, uh, the numbers are substantial uh, in terms of uh, the uh, playground equipment and uh, certainly having children that have uh, benefited from uh, the playground that was installed some 25 years ago and replaced now uh, at Elma Township Public School. I, I was shocked when I was involved with the uh, school council there and and mm -hmm. that's when parents uh, were and volunteers were allowed to actually work to actually decrease some of the prices that however is a thing of the past uh, so it's the full amount that you're paying for that and it's to speak to the to the size uh, of the uh, list wool uh, memorial uh, or the park uh, the playground there i concur uh, with uh, what jeff has said it's a substantial structure and when you have something of that size which is used of that you know, by our community and so on, it's important that we uh, put something of that same magnitude there mm -hmm. for safety and so on. There are, you know, having been on the uh, uh, Parks uh, and Rec uh, Advisory Committee before, we have talked and toured uh, there, that site and some of those nice little uh, 
the structures that are there, they may look fine, but they're not uh, fine in terms of uh, safety. So I think uh, the, the dollar amount there is, is quite uh, in, important. And I hope that there is some savings there because it is substantial. There's no doubt. Uh, but uh, it will be a, a lot of dollars. There's no doubt. And, and I hope that, that uh, some of our service clubs will uh, see the benefit of that in stepping forward. And I know uh, certainly... Uh, other service clubs uh, were involved uh, with uh, Listable Eastdale's uh, uh, playground as well as uh, Westfield's uh, playground, which is uh, currently ongoing. So there's a their whole run on, on those. So, mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. To add to that, uh, Westfield is in the process of a new playground, and in conversations with them, they're looking at a $300,000 project over time. It, you know, it'll take time, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Just further, if I may, uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, if I can just uh, slide off to talk about uh, the Trowbridge Pavilion. Uh, as the saying goes, you never know what uh, you've got until it's gone. Well, the people of uh, Trowbridge in their park have had that pavilion taken down for safety reasons uh, some three years ago, just before the pandemic, as I recall, and there was certainly plans to move forward with that. And uh, those were uh, postponed and so on, but I have heard uh, from a number of uh, uh, people in the Trowbridge area that uh, they are looking forward to uh, this project. I've had to say that it's been on the books, and uh, e even though we've we've planned for that, there's there's reasons why it didn't happen. So I'm hopeful uh, in our um, staff deliberations and, and council that uh, we can see uh, some of these projects similar to the Trowbridge Pavilion that had been postponed uh, uh, for some period of time. If we can get to those. Uh, first, if you will, uh, before some of these other projects that have come forward uh, after that time. Uh, it's, a rel it's an important park, the Robert Mathis Park, and I think it's important that uh, for those uh, that use that facility that they, now that baseball is back and so on, that the pavilion is there. So thanks very much. Um, uh, Mr. Newell, I just wondered, with the planning of new play structures in the municipality, are we thinking about... Um, accessibility, accessibility needs of children in wheelchairs, that kind of thing. Will that be built into the structures that we're going to be installing? Yeah, um, typically uh, it's something that is built in already when it comes to talking about that, whether it be um, crime prevention through environmental design and graffiti resistant materials and then accessibility uh, issues, those are kind of two of the buzzwords that happen all the time when you start talking about playgrounds, but accessibility would certainly be addressed. Thank you. Council, any further questions about facilities for Mr. Newell? Councillor Norton. Uh, thanks to you, Chair Andreessen. Um, I might speak to the, the library roof. Um, uh, will that, uh, the timing of that, will that uh, uh, kind of clash with uh, more construction happening on the library, or sorry, uh, the sorry the library. I was already on the yeah. PUC roof. That's where I was thinking. Sorry about that. Um, the the library is um, we we just had a, a study done on it to talk about the constr to see what it is that needs to be done there. The work that needs to be done is to the uh, the east side of the facility where the building of the, like the new uh, North Perth Access Centre would be to the west and to the south, so it, it wouldn't conflict. And again, the timing of that project is unknown at this point, depending on funding of the RHI and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. So we would have to just work our way around it to make sure that we... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything further, Council? Lots of questions, lots of work to be done, and um, we look forward to these projects in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that concludes our capital proposal presentations from our department staff. Uh, we anticipate, Council, that there may be some additional um, proposals forthcoming, and um, they will be presented in the future, hopefully in the next month or so. Um, as they just need a bit more time to be prepared to come to council. Um, item six is about our combined capital budget, and I'd like to invite Deputy Treasurer Becky Belfour to walk us through the bottom line of this capital budget. 
And I believe in the ebook, it's right at the beginning. Is that correct, Ms. Belfour? Actually, I'm going to have Lindsay post the newest one with the two projects that were mentioned this evening, the accessible doors for the daycare, as well as the four-wheel pickup truck. Okay. Um, and that way, council can see everything. The one I sent you earlier today. No, the final one. While we're just waiting for that, um, coming up in the next part of the agenda, Council, we will be having an opportunity to have more discussion and debate. So you might want to be doing some pre-thinking. If there's any other comments, uh, suggestions you want to make to our departments um, at that time, we'll, we'll be entertaining it at, at um, item 7. Are we able to display that? The... Um, Oh, she's working on it. Okay. Well, she's just uh, doing that. I'll just uh, a recap of the budget itself, the new FMW software and the project sheets. Just so uh, I'm not sure if you realize, but there is an asset estimated useful life section that we tried to fill in where, where possible. Annual operating costs that would happen if the projects went forward, we tried to fill that in as well as the costs associated with depreciation every year for taking on those projects just to give council an update and hopefully um, some understanding of what those costs look like. Uh, there is also a ranking section within each department. Uh, department heads ranked themselves. Um, they, some departments felt it was a little subjective because everyone looks at things a little bit differently even though we kind of give some criteria on that. Uh, just so you know, senior staff did meet last week on Thursday and took the whole list and we went through it again. And I think we had nine projects that we kind of slotted a little bit differently compared to the original um, numbers that you received. And what we looked at doing is putting it from uh, a rating of 40, 60, or 80. So like the top priorities mid-priorities and the lower priorities. That was how we kind of ranged it. I know last year when we did capital ranking, uh, we were, or capital budgets, we were asked to go back and rank them again, sort of as a group. So that's what we did preamble to this meeting, which was a good process for managers to know all of the projects and where they kind of fit in the whole big scheme of the picture. So that hopefully will help council as well. Little issue with uh, turning the page. Here we are. I think we're getting it now. That's great. Well, Thank this you. Is just a high level. Uh, we're still working with the new budget software on the looks and capabilities of the various reports. So, for timing purposes, this is uh, just a high level of each of the departments, and we've added in those two projects. So, that being said, um, our new project total is $25,752,990. Or sorry, twenty-five million seven hundred fifty-two thousand nine hundred ninety dollars And um, so, that's just the high-level look of those. There's another one then with the new ranking. We can show you the new ranking, too, and that way you'll have it in front of you uh, to determine, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on moving forward with all of the projects or? So the combined budget at this time is $25,752,990. That's correct. And again, that's just with those two projects that um, Public Works and uh, facilities added in their discussions. Um, and just to recap for the public, this would not affect our, our tax levy. It'll come out of other sources, which could be, you know, surplus, um, reserves, donations, development charges, development charges grants. grants. So there's lots of other um, funding avenues that cover these projects. 
Council, do you have any questions at this time um, regarding that bottom line um, for Ms. Belfour? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks very much, uh, Chair Andreessen, and thanks, uh, Becky. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at, and I don't think it changes here, but uh, on the, the Park Operations Administration, can you just help me here? So we've got, it's the only one that has donations of 500000 Where Where is that? Where's the donations of 500000 on the Park Operations? So that's the MAP 59, the 500000 donation. Okay, so just further, my understanding is, is that the MAP 59 group has their fundraising goal is 1.4 million so i'm just trying to understand the whether whether in fact that's 1.4 million or if it's only the 500,000 that was uh, sorry. i know that i know that the goal was 1.4 million i just put a realistic number in there as 500,000 just because uh, i know council had agreed at one time to cover the cost of it, and this was a, uh, an opportunity for us to recover some of that cost through donations. So I thought it was a prudent number to put in, $500,000 as a target, but that's not gonna stop them as far as what they wanna do as, as far as fundraising. Okay, fair enough. So that's, <coughs> so again, the, the uh, our budget uh, sheets, capital budget sheets are for that four, uh, 1.4 million, like the total project cost then? Is yes, that right? that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right, and fair and enough. I just... comes, yeah, if a grant comes available, like a trillion grant or something, that we could p apply it to that as well. All right, I just needed to get that straight. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Um, Mayor Kaysenberg. The question, thanks, Chair Andreessen. I think the question we always ask ourselves is, can staff pull this off? Is there capacity? in terms of, of staff uh, to actually manage these projects and, and see them through. And uh, certainly we've seen over the, the years of my first term of council a lot of carryover, uh, which suggests that sometimes capacity is limiting, right? So um, I wouldn't mind a response from perhaps the CAO at this point uh, with regards to um, the capacity to, to do what has been projected here. Go ahead, uh, CEO Snell. Thank you for the question. We actually had a, a, a fair bit of talk about this at the senior management level because we certainly understand it's been a previous concern of council and certainly a previous concern of, of the management team. And although we think the plan, again, is ambitious, um, many of the projects, though, will end up being multi-year projects regardless of staff capacity. And so some of that, what we're looking at, whether that's things like the pool or um, some of the construction projects are so large, even they'll be, they could possibly go into two years no matter um, how we tackle them. So we felt it was important to put everything forward that we think we can at least get started. Some of them may bleed into 2024, um, but um, for example, we have certainly have a very ambitious facilities um, um, capital project compared to normal, but we're at the point now where we need to do some catch up too. So it's um, Jeff and I have talked at length, and he assures me that we can bite at least off a big chunk of that those projects. And so we're um, we're cognizant of council's concern, and we have the same concern, but we think we can um, at least get everything started in, in twenty twenty three, and some of them. Uh, certainly, we're being realistic. Some of it's going to bleed into 2024, possibly. Go ahead, Mr. Um, um, Mayor Kaysenberg. So, um, one more question then. Um, this budget uh, summary that's on the screen, the, the one that uh, we saw a few moments ago, um, it, it includes, I assume, expenditures that are new, as in their 2023 dollars to new projects and carryover projects that have wrapped into 2023. Am I correct? I just want to confirm that. And, and if I'm correct, can you sort of give me the split? Like how much is carried over out of that 25.7 million for the sake of argument versus uh, how much is new? there are some carryover projects anything that was not spent we considered a carryover and it's the full amount back on the table 
because nothing was spent, and that's if anything um, gets spent this year, it will be allocated out of the development trenches, that sort of thing. If there is a project that had money allocated to it, it says carryover. So we, uh, Fran and I had a discussion when we started this process, just because it's new software, that kind of thing. Um, we try to ensure that there is a carry. I don't know the exact dollars at this moment, but I will have it for the final presentation on April the 5th. Um, still working through all of the capital finalization pieces, um, so I will have that for you. But we tried to ensure that anything that didn't have money spent was not considered a carryover. It was fresh and new, put in the whole mix for council to decide, is it as important this year as some of the other projects? That's how we're, we were looking at it for moving forward this year. So hope that explains some of it. Okay, um, thank you, Ms. Belfort. We are morphing into item seven, so I'm just going to say we're now in item seven where we're um, having more of that, you know, basic discussion and debate, which I think is really healthy. Um, this is an opportunity to ask for the questions, make comments, um, uh, which could be very helpful for our department heads. And we'll relax the rules of debate, of course, um, just to allow for that, that discussion to continue. And I'll make a speaker's list as we go along. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to hear your comments. And, and if you have further questions, this is a great time to, to bring those forth. Um, so um, we'll start with Councillor Johnson, then Councillor Rothwell, and then we'll continue on. Go ahead, Councillor Johnson. Thank you. I have a question about um, the money uh, that's coming for development charges. So it's 1.536 million. How would that compare to what was pulled out of development charges previous years? I do not have that in front of me right at the moment, but I will make note and make sure you have that for uh, for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. CEO Snell, do you want to approach? Yeah, go ahead. And I don't have an exact number, but I just want to make the comment here. It really depends on the project and how much development is impacting that project. So, um, for example, line 84, when we did the road widening and put turning lanes in, that project's probably um, easily defendable for development charges because growth has led to those necessary um, requirements of line 84 to, to meet, need to be widened, where some of the other projects may have a smaller component. So it does vary year to year depending on the project itself. I just, I, I just wanted to make that comment just so we don't get too hung up on how they compare. Councillor Rothwell, and then Council Blazek. Thanks very much, uh, Chair and Dreesen. Uh, uh, just a comment that, uh, so we did hear from some of our uh, managers that uh, some of the uh, projects have, uh, as, as late as today, have gone out for tender. Uh, if, in fact, Council agrees with the, uh, the proposed capital uh, budget here, uh, are, are, is Council... Uh, prepared to have pre-budget or well like pre-final budget approval for uh, staff to go out and get more of these uh, tenders uh, and the basis of that question is that because the list is so long and because we know contractors over the last two years in particular have uh, had more than enough work to do uh, frankly uh, I don't want us to be in that situation again uh, I think uh, it would behoove us to uh, if council agrees that uh, we would have those uh, projects which staff deem specifically necessary to, to move forward with, they, they give that priority status uh, so that we can get those numbers in here sooner rather and, and get uh, decisions made uh, to move forward. I'm not sure if staff have had that conversation and if we can have that conversation with council. Thank you. Actually, I, I can probably um, uh, provide some information about that. When we move forward in item eight, we will be having a resolution and it will give direction uh, if approved to staff to to move forward. Um, we, we will take input from the community, of course, but like you said, they do need to move forward in many of these projects to uh, get tenders started and, uh, you know, so we can get some of this work done. Um, and that will be part of the resolution moving forward, if that's helpful. Yeah. Well, Councillor Blazek. 
I wanted to go back to the discussion that we were having about playgrounds um, because I have a comment and you had said earlier to keep it to questions only. So yeah. I don't I don't mean to, to rewind and, and go over something that we had already discussed, but um, two, two things. As a parent of school-aged children and an aunt of school-aged children, I watched the local um, schools and their um, funding and fundraising for their um, new playgrounds very closely. I aided in, in fundraising efforts. And the cost was astounding. It was absolutely shocking what, what these playgrounds were going to cost. That being said, uh, I live right by Memorial Park. I walk past it. I drive past it multiple times every single day. That park, obviously not this time of year so much, but that park is used all of the time. We can hear kids playing in that park from our house all of the time. It is very heavily used. And if we're very interested in keeping young families in this community, we need to have a great park. If we want that to be a destination park where we're talking about pools and bringing in um, families to be using that facility, it needs to have a great park. It needs to have a great play structure in my opinion. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, ideas? No? Um, Councilor Richardson, go ahead. Thank you, and through you, Chair Andreessen, I'd just like to commend staff for bringing forward a very ambitious budget this year, but I also tend to agree that this there's some significant catch-up that needs to be done. Uh, and as it's been mentioned in the past, that we've got to maintain our course because if stuff gets too far behind, it just becomes incredibly expensive and cumbersome to attempt to get it done. That if it's palatable this year to do it, um, then I'm in full support of this. I think it's very good. But there's obviously facilities and roads are the biggest, the lion's share of the budget that we have here. Um, it's ambitious, but if staff is confident that we can tackle it all and get it out of the gate, then I'm in support of it. And I we got to keep on top of the stuff that we do best. So I am go forward for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. Uh, Ms. Belfour. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. Some of the discussions with senior management was around if a project came up that was not on the list, they may come to you with projects that have not started yet and request which do you want to not see happen in order to make some of those other projects. So I think you may see that coming forward this year um, if something comes up that's not on the docket and uh, make those decisions at that time. And as for Alan, uh, Mr. Rothwell's comments regarding uh, the budget and moving forward with the tenders, if tenders come in prior to the budget being passed, uh, a motion can be passed for council to give approval at that time. So that would be covered off. Mm -hmm. Clerk Klein, could you um, just bring up that uh, chart again, just in case you need to reference it? Um, and as I see the, the time, and we seem to be finishing up with our comments, you might want to wake up eScribe um, as we try and do some resolutions shortly. Okay, Council, any other further questions, comments? Yes, uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Yes, so through you, Chair Andreessen, and thank you, staff, for all your presentations tonight. Just a comment for Lyndon, if you said it before, I must have missed it, but could you at some point bring us a, a report um, with regards to future road construction and maybe the year, like what's coming up for 2024, 25, 26, just so we have an idea? Go ahead. If I can. So hopefully for next year's new budget software, that will be sh shown we will be having a five or 10 year forecast and it will all be showing um, uh, on the budget items for you to see. So Lyndon started this year with his, and we just hadn't ruled out. We thought we'll get this year under our belt and we put in the 2024 as we always have done the next year. But so uh, we're already, department heads are already talking about those future years. So it'll be a much different look for you for next year, for sure. Good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Johnston. Just a quick comment. It is a very aggressive capital budget, which is not uncommon for a Chris-led staff, which is not a bad thing. But 
with the amount of growth we have in North Perth, if you look at how many dollars are combined in operations, facilities, we're behind on facilities. IT now we need to keep up on. If we don't, we can sit here and nitpick a project here, a project there, and, and cut it back a little bit, but all we're doing is falling further behind. So, you know, as much as it's that scary numbers in here, especially I'm assuming for some of the newer councillors, 25 point some million, it's, it's, there's a lot of zeros on the end of those checks. But if we don't do it, we're falling behind and further behind and further behind. And then we're sitting here or someone sitting here in five or six years and the numbers are worse. Every year they keep climbing. So it's aggressive, but it's progressive and it, it, it has to be done. Thank you. Oh, I like that, that little uh, spin to it. Aggressive but progressive. Very good spin to it. Any further comments or questions? Okay, yes. Uh, Councillor Nordham. Uh, thanks, Chair and Jason. Yeah, I'm just still thinking towards the, uh, uh, the fire support vehicle. I'm just wondering if we should uh, consider going to a conventional, just because... I feel like a hybrid is more for stop and go city traffic, and I think fire vehicles are usually uh, rather going straight forward to the uh, emergencies and whatnot. So, and I'm also concerned about uh, maintenance costs for that. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, does anyone in staff want to speak to that further, or uh, Chris? Okay. Yes. Say hello, Snell. Thank you. And certainly we can look at, I mean, we can tender it both ways too as well, but I think one of the things we're looking at is, and we're hoping to have it done this year with um, the county and our member municipalities is the, is the climate uh, lens to make all our decisions through. We do have one hybrid in the fleet already on um, the building department. They've been very happy with um, not only the maintenance requirements, but also the fuel they've saved in that hybrid. Um, um, so our first experiment has gone very well, um, and certainly Jenny and I can have, or Chief Pape and I can have additional talks as we proceed to make sure uh, a hybrid will meet the demands of what we have, but, we could, but we'll keep um, Councillor Norm's comments in mind. Okay, thank you. Councillor Rothwell. Uh, thanks, uh, Chair and Teresa Knight. There's one other uh, uh, vehicle that's uh, in the proposal, uh, and that's in the Parks and Rec, I think it is, for the vehicle. Or wh where's the other vehicle Operations. that's going to be utilized? Uh, pardon me. No, it's, it's uh, environmental law, pardon me. So, but it's, it's a conventional vehicle, is that correct? So it is a pickup truck, and we have done some research on the on um, hybrid, or fully electric or even hybrid pickup trucks. And one of the concerns right now is the towing capabilities and how long the battery capacity lasts in towing. So that's something we're going to further explore. It's something we could take a look at. Um, certainly, the pickup trucks are are fairly new technology, with sort of this being the first year coming out. So. Um, and, Certainly, I think we want to look at all our options when, we, when we're buying new fleet. Um, and I can maybe um, let Mark expand. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to comment that we are actually looking next year uh, an additional vehicle, uh, part of the fleet replacement, and replacing one of those vehicles with a hybrid uh, vehicle next year. And one that would be more typical for... Um, some of the rounds and things that they do that it's not going long distances, it's just being used within a um, close area. Thank you. Okay. Anything further, Council? I'll debate it out and I'll discuss it out. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to move on to um, our next item in, on the agenda. And that takes us to item eight. Um, we've heard our capital expense presentations. We've seen the bottom line of all these projects and we've engaged in some debate and discussion. We are at the point of the meeting now where we should be giving some direction to staff. 
we need to basically give staff direction so they can continue to move on with these proposals as they're presented. I do have a resolution at this point. It doesn't necessarily approve the budget yet, but it does um, give staff direction and it does give the opportunity for the public to give us some input prior to us having a full approval of this, this capital budget as well. The resolution at this time reads as follows. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth gives direction to staff to move forward with the 2023 capital budget project package as presented by Councillor Leanne Andreessen, budget chair, using the amount of $25,752,990. Do I have a mover for this resolution? Councillor Matt Richardson and seconded by um, Mayor Kaysenberg. Any discussion or debate on this resolution? Okay, let's have that vote. And that is carried. All right, Council, um, this takes us to item nine in our agenda. And uh, we are now at the point of um, our confirmatory bylaw. I have a resolution before me that reads that bylaw number 30 2023 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed, and that the said bylaw be signed by the chair and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Um, could I have um, Councillor Enstead make that motion? Yes, I would make that motion, Chair Andreessen. Thank you. And someone to second that. Councillor Rothwell. And if we could have that vote. Thank you very much. That's carried. Council, it's been a very productive evening in terms of um, our capital budget discussions and our presentations. I just want to let the public know that during the week of April the 17th, 2023, we will be doing a presentation to launch a video that will outline every aspect of the budget from a capital perspective as well as an operations perspective. During that week, the public will have the opportunity to take a look at our budget and we'll provide some graphs and uh, some visuals to help with uh, understanding how our money will be spent over 2023. Our public will be given an opportunity to provide input. There will be forms that you can fill out to provide comments and suggestions. And um, that will be again from April 17th for seven days. After we have our public input session um, through the video and through the forms that we receive, we will have an opportunity then to finally um, do a final approval of the operations budget and the capital budget, which will be towards the, the end of April. So at this time, it's again, it's been quite productive. I thank you for your participation and I thank staff for all their preparations and their presentations this evening. and for your engagement council and for the uh, excellent discussion and debate that we've done. At this time, we are moving towards adjournment, which is not debatable. And I have a resolution before me for that. The council meeting uh, adjourns this evening at 8.58 to meet again for general council business on Monday, April the 3rd, 2023 at seven o'clock p.m. Um, Deputy Mayor, Kellen, would you make that motion? And um, Councillor Duncan, would you second that? Thank you. And if we could have that vote. And that is carried. I note that this meeting is now adjourned.